Hey gents, I'm excited to bring you this video today to talk about one of my favorite characters on one of the greatest television series, Jim Halpert in The Office. Collectively, if I told you that in the past 10 years between The Office and Scrubs, I've spent 10,000 hours watching, laughing, and crying with these shows, I would barely be exaggerating. So this is in no way a criticism, but a love letter to the show, and it took everything in me not to make this an extended 40 minute analysis full of the great comedy, storylines, and characters that unfolded over 10 years on television. I declare bankruptcy! Son, butt liquor! Our prices have never been lower! Stop it, heat! Needless to say, I will be talking about nearly every plotline and story point, so if you haven't watched The Office and you don't want to be spoiled, I would stop now. I personally always identified with John Krasinski's character, Jim Halpert, as the tall, slender, fun-loving, hopeless romantic office professional just trying to win the girl and make a living. Right now, this is just a job. Not only from a character standpoint, but in his style evolution from bushy-haired, baggy shirt-wearing man-boy into slightly less boy-looking, tailored shirt-wearing modern gent. Every year or so, my wife and I rewatched the whole series from beginning to end, and this year I was particularly struck with Jim's transformation in style throughout the show. I think you too can make this evolution as Jim did, gradually and confidently. As we jump in here, I want to give a kudos to the series costume designers. Carrie Bennett did seasons one through four, and Alicia Raycraft did seasons five through nine. The show is a mockumentary style, and it was so grounded and perfectly captured what Stanley refers to in season nine as it's Pennsylvania business. I would just call it like middle America office professional. Let's take a closer look at Jim and his evolution of style, starting with season one. We'll talk about Jim's choice in color palettes, hairstyles, clothing fit, and of course, his watch. Over the course of The Office, Jim wears a blue shirt about 80% of the time, and nearly every shirt after season two is a simple semi-spread with a top button undone and a simple knot. Through the entire show, Jim rocks a Victorian Ox Swiss Army 24654 Infantry 38mm quartz watch, which is perfectly suited for him as a mid-market paper salesman from Scranton. In the first eight seasons, Jim really only seems to wear a handful of ties, a solid brown, a solid navy, a brown blue diagonal, a brown check, and a light brown. There's a khaki one that shows up, there's a Christmas tie, but Jim wears more ties in the last season than the entire series combined. So it just goes to show that if you have a few staples in your wardrobe, you're gonna look great regardless. From Jim, we can learn that a few simple things make a huge difference. Higher armholes and a trim fitted shirt can really upgrade your look. And although I would trim the sides and the back of my hair in the later seasons that he has, but that's just getting a little bit nitpicky. No one can blame Jim Halpert for the style that was the late 90s and early 2000s, but by the end of the show, Jim rocks the modern business casual in a way that season one Jim would barely recognize. From the moment we meet Jim Halpert in the first episode of The Office, he's always a very carefree, informal, nice guy and is extremely relatable as he cares enough about his job, but not enough to pour his heart into it. Uh, I'm, I'm boring myself just talking about this. His clothing and appearance reflect that, his hair is always perfectly disheveled and appears to pay no particular attention to what he is wearing as long as it is a shirt and tie. As you would expect with office attire, Jim wears a lot of blues, whites, and some creams, but the shirts are always way too big. You can see in almost every shot, his shirt is just hanging off of him. The shoulder seams do not line up well with his actual shoulders, he has extreme muffin top, and it's rare to see Jim with his sleeves not rolled up, but chances are, they're too big for his arms. We also get a few glimpses into probably the biggest mistake he could make, which is to improperly match his shoes and his belt, and not to mention the shoes themselves. A gay man would not leave the house wearing those shoes. Well, a gay man wouldn't leave the store wearing those shoes. Oh, hey, you bought me these shoes. <laughs> his style largely remains the same through season one and two. We do get a few glimpses at casual gym, which he makes uh, similar style gaffes. His V-neck sweater is showing his undershirt, and who can blame him for the and one era of basketball with those big baggy shorts. At the end of season two, we see Jim take a big leap with Pam. He comes up short, landing him in Stamford, Connecticut with a new promotion and a slightly upgraded style to match. In Stamford, Jim begins to wear suits more often, but unfortunately he just walked into Macy's or Joseph A. Banks and grabbed whatever was on sale. The light colors were just falling out of style at the time and they barely fit his slender build. So while he was dressing the part in principle, a few tweaks to his outfits would have made him look dynamite. Didn't think you'd notice. Season three gives us some gym highlights when we see young Jim wearing a giant ill-fitting suit, we see wedding Jim, vampire Jim, and we get Jim's impersonation of Dwight's signature brown suit and mustard shirt, which only cost... It's a grand total of $11. 
And at the end of the season, Karen helps Jim out by getting him a cut in style. So that I could look presentable and not, as she so lovingly puts it, homeless. We return to season four as Jim goes back to a scruffy mop, but you can begin to see his hair have some flow to it, and you'll notice this subtle evolution over the next season as it begins to take more shape. You also get to see his clothes fit a little better in this season, in addition to a sweet mustache, a day on the links, and some casual Jim. By the end of the season, Jim's hair is a little bit more intentionally styled, but he's still doing that belt shoes thing, and his pants remain much too large for his frame. By season five, we get to see Jim's style really start to come together and in the middle of the season, what appears to be his first properly fitted shirt. Season five is also when he largely plateaus in his evolution for the next few years. At the back half of the season, he wears shirts with higher armholes, giving him a much better silhouette, and a double cuffed rolled sleeves are a staple and remain so through the rest of the show. In season six, Jim gets another promotion to manager, and he does the suit every day. The colors are more modern, but he still just needs to spend like 50 bucks on a tailor to make his suits look just right. In season seven, we get to meet Danny Cordray, played by the incredibly handsome Timothy Oliphant, who looks dynamite in a shirt and tie. I would definitely buy paper from him. And this is a glimpse into why this all matters. In the show, Danny is known as the greatest paper salesman around. There is a piece of that which comes to dressing the part. Danny is dressed well and is taken seriously as a professional, which puts your best foot forward to show that you care about details and you want to be taken seriously. We also get a couple of moments where Jim fights a snowman and some of the heartbreaking ones as we say goodbye to Michael and this amazing exchange as Jim says goodbye to Michael as well. See you right now. You started with this company as a fine young man. You know what I think we should do? I think we should just say the goodbyes for tomorrow at lunch. Oh, okay. And then tomorrow, I can tell you <clears throat> what a great boss you turned out to be. Best boss I ever had. I will see you tomorrow at lunch. I am looking forward to lunch. With that, the last two seasons are nearly the same, so Jim's transformation is complete. As Jim begins to work with his new company in season nine, he does wear some great fitting suits and his daily pair of slacks look to be much better fitting in these final two seasons. He also upgrades his senior citizen $30 bargain basement shoes for better looking Oxfords fitting of a modern guy. Over the course of nine seasons, we see Jim go from this to this. We watch Jim fall in love with Pam, get rejected, make a comeback, get married, become a father, start a company, and then settle into the life that he never wanted but is so well suited for. In the final season, the show takes a victory lap, giving us such satisfying character moments with Jim, Pam, and Dwight that are years in the making. A bazooka. You remembered. Of course I did. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> the hidden message that we learn from Jim is that no matter what you wear, what your job is, just being around people you love will make any job bearable. I'm so thankful to the entire cast and the creators of the show for giving us this ride together to fall in love with these characters, laugh and cry with them, and just make an incredible connection. And I just want to let the last few moments of the show play out because it is so perfect. I can't believe you came. That's what you said. <laughs> Best prank ever. I sold paper at this company for 12 years. My job was to speak to clients on the phone about quantities and types of copier paper. Even if I didn't love every minute of it, everything I have, I owe to this job. This stupid, wonderful, boring, amazing job. Hey guys, thank you for watching. I know I veered a little bit off of the style analysis transformation and more into love letter of the office, but that's just the nature of these. I'm always inspired by watching other video essays on YouTube, like the Nerd Writer, Lessons from the Screenplay, Patrick H. Wilhelms, and all those guys out there. So uh, thank you to the great content creators on YouTube. And if you know anybody that loves the office like I do or like we do, uh, go and share this video with them. I do cover the best menswear on the internet, typically on this channel, but I've, I actually woke up during my vacation and wrote like
like the first half of this script. I just, I knew I wanted to dive into this. And if you'd be interested to see other stuff like this on my channel, go ahead and comment below. I have a few ideas for what I might be able to cover in the uh, media style realm. And so uh, that'll give me a little bit of inspiration to do that. Until next time, gents, this is The Cavalier.